In today's episode, we're going to take these sad brushes that have seen better days. They're so old and yucky, and I want to show you that it's okay. We can actually make some really good art still out of these old dingy brushes. So get ready, because I'm going to help you out. Hi, I'm Sean, and welcome to my art show. Brushing up with Sean. Let's paint this. So have you ever come to that point where you are painting so much that your brushes start to get that wear and tear? I do. I do it a lot because I paint an awful lot. I get a lot of my brushes and I don't want to keep buying them over and over. So is it okay to keep using some of the same brushes even though they aren't exactly brand new? The answer is yes, you definitely can. And I'm here to help you with that and hopefully overcome some of that just in case you're feeling like, I don't know if I can. I'm gonna show you some brushes real quick and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna go ahead and make this awesome cool painting just out of these kind of dingy brushes, all right? We can still make a lot of cool things happen. So I'm gonna show you, look at some of these brushes right here. So look, look at this guy right here. Look at all that rust on there. I've got bristles kind of going all over the place. Look, at there's even leftover paint inside. So that one's not really pretty. Uh, this one's its little brother. Look at that one. <laughs> that one's just got a lot of rust on it as well. This one here, you can see it's got some bristles coming out. It's like actually kind of like just, you know, it looks like it's just not, there's some of them are curling at the end, just really not looking good. And then sometimes you get some brushes that are just really just, Ah, you know, they've seen better days, all right? So like this one right here, you can see, look at those bristles coming right off there. I'm gonna point it right at you there so you can see just, just not the best bristles for sure, all right? And some of these you can see like I've got like these fan brushes, but look at the fans, not so fanny, all right? It almost is a fanny because it's a terrible, <laughs> terrible fan brush and it really has some, you know, really dingy bristles now on it. So we're gonna overcome that though. I'm gonna show you how you can actually keep using these brushes and make some cool things happen. Also, we can use small brushes, even if you, uh, you know, I've showed you a couple big ones. Even if you have smaller brushes, it's okay. I'm gonna show you some tricks on how you can keep using those because you really can get some imperfections would actually look better than if you were to use a brand new brush, all right? So let's get started. All right, so take a look at my canvas right here. As you can see, it is a dingy old canvas too that we're gonna be working on. I had a painting on here, I slapped some gesso over it, and you can even see some of the old painting still existing in here. It's quite uneven, and you know what? We're just gonna go with it. So I've got three colors that I'm gonna be using today. I've got blue, white, and black. All right, and like typically with all these paintings, what I like to do is start from the furthest thing back and work my way forward. So I'm gonna take this rust bucket right here and just make a little bit of a nice light blue. I'm gonna put some blue into my side of my white and just mix it in there. I'm using acrylic paint. And again, this is not the expensive acrylic paint too, so don't feel like you have to go get all the expensive stuff. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do this back and forth, side to side motion. I really like doing this with my sky and my clouds and different things of that nature. Um, just because it adds a little bit of texture. You can also use this in, when you're doing water, things of that nature. But what I want you to see is that I'm just covering this paint, this gesso, this old painting that I had behind here, and it's covering it quite well. All right, you're seeing it disappear. And I'm also taking this paint as far as I can go without putting any more of my brush. All right, so that's what acrylic paint, it dries so fast. But we're gonna go ahead and just try to see how far we can take it. Now, if you look, the sky is already starting to have some texture. 
All right, that's actually fantastic. We want that. We want to have some uneven sky looking stuff. In fact, it almost looks like there's maybe some clouds going on in there. And I'm just going light blue and white right now. I'm just adding this beautiful, beautiful color to this canvas. Now, as you can see, we only are using three different colors on this painting, so I want to kind of just keep an eye on that and make sure that I'm using the colors that I want to use when I want to use them. And so, look at that. You can see we've got some awesome texture. This brush is doing a great job still doing that back and forth motion because that's all we need. If you want to make it a little bit darker, I put some pl uh, plain blue on here. And look at this. I can add some streaks into the sky, separating some of that light blue. And look at that, whoa. That one is awesome. So you can see now we're adding depth and texture the same brush, I'm using the same exact brush that I've been using this whole time, old rusty here. And you can see, look at that. Now, if you wanna go the opposite way and add highlights, take that same brush, put some plain white on it. See, look at that. And check this out. Look at the plain white highlights. It's gonna just naturally add some brighter areas. Really, really pretty effect. Look at that when I do in the middle there, you can really see these little clouds starting to form. And it almost looks like wind is taking it and shifting it over. And that's what's so great about just imperfections with these old brushes. They actually tend to make better imperfections and better realistic looking paintings. Look at that. See, now you got some cool clouds going up in the sky and it really has changed. Old Rusty did a fantastic job for us here. So we're gonna put him down. And I'm going to grab his little brother, Little Rusty, all right? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some mountains in the background. That's fun. We're going to go ahead and take some, a little bit more blue. Okay, it's going to be a little bit darker. And we're going to mix that in there. And I'm just going to make some distant triangles here. Maybe just separate. Look at this. I'm just adding some random little tops of triangles and just going right across. Now this is one of the tools that you can use. I use this a lot when I do my mountains because it adds so many great imperfections. In fact, you can make bigger mountain peaks if you want. You can make smaller ones, whatever you like. But using a darker blue just makes it look a little bit hazy. I'm going to take some of that blue down here and just keep on going. Now we can even add more mountains in front of this. It's a very easy step. We're gonna do that here soon, but first we're gonna work on some of these distant mountains. All right, it's coming together, isn't it? And you can see we're covering the canvas very well. This brush is actually making some good texture and imperfections already. It's already looking like we've got some great texture on these mountains. And we can just kind of continue a little bit of that over here. Little Rusty is doing such a great job for us. And I'm just randomly putting some paint and just making a nice formation of awesome mountains. Now, of course, we want to add some cool depth and a little bit more awesome glow and highlights to this. Now, we can do that. We can add some really dark blue in here. We can add some black if we need to. I leave that up to you. So as you can see, the sky is, you know, it's, it's cooling down right now. It's already starting to dry off. That's how quick this acrylic paint just starts to dry. And you know, I'm just, right now, I'm just looking at it and being like, hey, check this out. I can add more separation in clouds. I can do whatever I want, because I'm the artist, right? So we've got this beautiful, beautiful little background, but we need to add some cool stuff to this, this awesome texture. And I would recommend that we start maybe going into the black realm a little bit. Now, black's gonna overtake this very quickly, so we're just gonna add a little bit. We're gonna just test it out. So we're gonna take a little bit of that black and put it on our brush, and we're gonna mix it into some of the blue on the side here. So it's gonna kind of make a mucky blue. 
And I'm going to establish this side over here as most of my shadows. Right here on this side. Just by the top. So I'm just going to practice and learn where my shadows are. And also, too, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to make maybe a little bit of a mountain right in front of these guys and add a shadow of a mountain right there. So now I can tell we've got some cool shadows going on there. Some darker blue is going to be starting to happen and really make it exciting. But what I'm going to do now is since I know where my shadows are, I'm going to start practicing highlights. I'm going to go ahead and use one of these smaller brushes. But you can see it's not tight. It's not exactly the best brush. But don't worry, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to add some of my white and my light blue, very light blue, and a little bit more white. And you can see it's a very, very bright light blue, very, very bright. And I'm going to go ahead and just add these awesome little bits of highlights. I'm using just a, a little bit of an old brush here. It's got bristles that are all over. They're not the best, but I want you to just dab or blot a little bit with that brush. So you can see these awesome highlights starting to happen. I'm breaking up that original blue. I still want to see bits and pieces of that. All right, and some people use like a palette knife with this. We're going to practice again with these old dingy brushes and see what kind of good use we can get out of these guys. But look at these highlights. They're just really, really pretty. They're just starting to just break up that blue a little bit naturally. And like I said, we're going to go back to the low lights anyway soon. So don't worry. We're going to keep going back and forth a little bit with this. This takes a little bit more practice. But as you can see, it is so worth it just to get that beautiful, beautiful effect. And again, I'm using a very old dingy brush that is has not seen a good day in a long time. I'll put it that way. And then I'm going to add more white just to break it up even more on some of these areas. Look at this. And you can see this mountain just starting to get brighter and just a really awesome fun effect. I love that I can still use this brush over and over again even when I thought I'm like oh it's it's time to maybe take it on to better art pastures. No way I'm gonna still use this guy because I can get some pretty cool effects out of this old brush. All right look at that we've got some highlights going I'm gonna add some more low lights now I'm gonna wipe off that brush and I'm going to go back to some plain blue and I'm going to go ahead and just add some plain blue little low lights and change up adding a little bit more shadowing and breaking it up a little bit more a little bit more texture the more layers you tend to add and breaking it up and little bits here and there dabs blotting tends to make this look a little bit more realistic it, it's funny how it works and I'm gonna come over here on the side and don't worry if you like say like I messed up oh my gosh don't worry that's what it's all about it's a process of learning and even still you might be able to cover it up later on with some other techniques that we're gonna learn all right look at that and I'm not using a palette knife I'm just using this old dirty brush that would have been thrown away but I said no way we are going to keep this guy and keep it going. So we've got our mid low lights. I want to go ahead and get back into my really dark shadowing a little bit more because this is land and we want to make it look a little bit more realistic with some awesome, awesome low lights. Again, we're only using a few colors, black, white, and blue. That's it, <laughs> black, white, and blue. And I'm showing you how much you can really make out of these just these three colors. You're my boy, Blue! And he's turning out fantastic. It's looking great. I'm adding even more shadows and just, just messing around with it. You could do this on and on and on and on and on so much. 
texturing so much highlights and lowlights. And look, at, I'm going to put some blue on my brush and mix it into the black. I mean, I am just going at this thing. Now, if you watch some art shows, they tend to like soften it up. You're more than welcome to do that. You can take this old brush here. It's got a little paint still in there and it's dry and I'm gonna just soften it up. I just take it and just kind of go with it and just take that paint and just kinda spread it out a little bit and soften that bottom part a little bit so it almost looks kind of like a haze going down below. All right. And I'm just maybe dabbing and blotting this dry brush, adding some softening effect to some of these mountains. And it really does a good job. There you go. All right, we've got some mountains happening. You can see we've got all sorts of just, you know, highlights, low lights, just some fun stuff making these mountains imperfections are actually wanted so now you've got this beautiful scene using just a few colors and old dingy brushes but we can keep going you can keep adding more and more layers so as you tend to get closer a lot of the focus starts to coming in the colors start getting more vibrant they're not as toned down things start to get a little bit more defined all right, so you can see I'm just adding just some random stuff here. And it is very random. I'm just in my head, just going with the flow and just being like, what can I put on here? I'm just flattening out the land, maybe. Maybe looking at like we've got some kind of cool rolling hills down here below. Whatever you'd like. This just shows you that you can easily simply do some cool stuff. Now, if again, I just put some black on this brush and wow, did that just change everything that added more contrast that added way more of a bold, bold color right there. So like I said, you got to be careful a little bit more with black, but don't worry. I'm just taking some more blue and just going with the flow. It's okay if you mess up. It's okay. No big deal. All right, look at that. I am just going fast. This land is coming together just nicely. And I'm I'm feeling good about it, guys. I'm feeling really good about it because I'm so optimistic that we're gonna find this great, cool way of making this just come to life. This is just background stuff, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And the colors that are coming off of this are just really, really pretty. It is amazing the blues and the grays and all the stuff that's happening on here and the texture that's popping out. It is just, I'm getting blown away here, so I'm loving it. All right, now we've got this entire canvas covered. All right, we've worked on some mountains, some sky, and I, what I wanna do now is add a little bit of life to this guy, a little bit of life. So there's ways of doing that, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and just pick up, remember old Rusty here? Old Rusty, all right? And then we've got Rusty's little, little Rusty, his little brother, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna just maybe just add a little bit of shadowing. Now this is gonna be a black and dark blue. And all I'm gonna do is dab or blot my brush. And again, you could go back to, you know, the larger one if you like. You can, you know, switch brushes, whatever you want. But this sometimes is why your brushes can get a little bit, you know, not in the best shape because I'm dabbing and blotting those bristles. So sometimes that happens, that's okay, but I'm still using this brush. I'm adding maybe a little shrub right there and you can just keep doing this. So I'm gonna get my large brush, that way it covers a little bit more land here. I'm just gonna mix in some of that dingy black and blue. And I'm gonna go ahead and just start blotting and dabbing some of these awesome little bushes. This adds some cool texture. I'm just doing the shadows first, and then I'll add some highlights on there later. 
And then you could even add some right here and they make them a little bit thinner as you go further and further away. But it, what it does is it gives it a little bit more life and more texture. Just a fun, fun step to make these imperfections just happen right on your canvas here. Again, I'm just doing the shadowing first and then I'll add some awesome life to it. There you go. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take my plate I'm going to go with uh, this guy right here and put, make some real light blue. And look at this. I'm going to add some cool little highlights in here and make some awesome little branches start to come out of this. See, I'm just going to dab these imperfect dots and it gives the illusion like there's some cool plant life. Don't worry, we can take a small brush and add twigs and all sorts of stuff in here. And then I'm gonna add some highlights on these guys. Yeah, look at that, it's coming together. Wow, look at that, we got some plants. Let's add some happy trees now, right? Bob was here, he'd be so happy. All right, let's go ahead and get that dingy brush out here. And I'm going to go ahead and just make a line. Take a deep breath if you need to. I'm going to make this tree right here. Woo. Again, I'm not getting this, the clearest, cleanest lines now because I'm actually using this brush that has seen better days. Okay, so I'm not getting the cleanest thing. But what you can do is I call it crunching your bristles. You take your brush, you put it in a napkin, you wrap your hand around it with your and just press down with your thumb and your finger and it helps get those bristles a little bit closer together and then I can then I can put some more paint on here and you can see that I can get tighter lines I can actually make the top of this a little bit better now I can even make little little sprouts coming out of here and just change the look with just some plain black that's all I used now there's probably a little bit of blue still wet so it turned maybe a mucky blue don't worry that black will overcome it and overshadow it alright so I'm gonna test a couple brushes I'm gonna test this guy with this tree and then we'll use some of those other brushes just to see how we can do so I'm gonna come down a little bit on this tree and leave a little bit of that awesome nice line up there and very lightly, I'm going to zigzag while I'm coming down, barely touching the canvas, using this old rusty brush with loose bristles. And I'm going to try to attempt to paint this nice little bit of a tree here. And now I'm doing plain black just to practice with. All right, you don't want to use too much. And you want to be very, very light touching the canvas. All right, you can see I'm doing all of this in one show, start to finish, because I really, really want you to see how you can use these brushes. There's no tricks, there's no editing or anything like that. We are actually using these old brushes and really getting some fine results out of them. All right, and as I go down, this tree's getting a little bit thicker. And voila! You've got an awesome little tree right there. And now I want to add maybe some highlights on it. You can actually take maybe one of your smaller brushes or a fan brush. Now this one's really just not a great fan brush. The bristles are loose, they're very old, you know, just they're, they're not good. Now this actually is a brand new brush, but it's it, it's it looks it's just a not high quality brush. So we're gonna practice with this guy. We're gonna just go ahead and make some real light blue because I'm adding highlights, and I'm just gonna just very lightly, maybe break up some of that black and just dab some of these dots here, and that can just I mean if we want put some plain white and now it's snowfall <laughs> you know I mean really you could just 
have so much fun with this and again this is an imperfect brush it's it's not high quality we've got old it looks like and we've got really not good quality brushes so don't worry I want you to see what you can really do and make out of these guys I'm just adding looks like now snowfall that was improv I wasn't planning on making snowfall now I'm gonna make some snow in this tree <laughs> it's all just making it up as you go and I'm breaking it up and I'm just adding some really fun little textures on to this tree all right look at that and you can make some just kind of popping off a little bit it doesn't have to be right on the branch it can look like maybe it's coming off and it breaks up that black a little bit look at that now we've got snowfall on a tree and now since I'm going with the snow we're gonna go ahead and just add some more highlights and break up some of this nice little bit of a mountain here or this little hill in the back and just add a nice little dusting of highlight on it look at that we completely changed the direction just because of this highlight all right and now you can see I'm just maybe adding a little bit more adding just some random stuff going on in the background and look at that so then you're saying well you know what I added too many highlights you can always go back you can always just change it up you can always just switch things up look at that I'm just gonna soften some of this up you can do whatever you'd like that's the joy of painting and really just getting a feel for how your paints work and how some of your brushes can make some pretty awesome things happen all right well I'm still excited about this painting so I'm gonna keep going <laughs> I love this painting you know and I'm just gonna add some smaller trees back here and then I'm gonna add some sticks you know just you know just random stuff you know in nature nature's not perfect and we use that to our advantage on a lot of paintings here I'm gonna make a tree next to this guy and that's what I want you to just have fun with it look at this doing that side to side motion I'm doing a little bit faster because it's in the back and then this one's a small tree in the back here so I'm gonna just add you know maybe just some smaller same technique though imperfect there you go you got a nice little tree there let's make a buddy for him and we got that little friend for you now yeah let's keep it rocking let's make let's let's go up let's let's do this let's get brave I'm gonna just make another a big guy right here <laughs> oh well I'm covering some of that mountains there some people like get it like no don't cover anything don't worry it adds to the realism sometimes let me tell you it is a pretty cool deal you know what I'm gonna bring this guy down right here and now you can see like it's all about per perspective like visual just really just distance you've gotten so much cool stuff out of this painting and again I'm just squiggling some lines here making some trees <laughs> no big deal let's add our highlights with our little cruddy fan brush here let's start on this guy because I know he was the one we started with first and I'm just dabbing and blotting some white paint oh yeah let's mix some light blue too now you gotta use like the edge here of this brush just to get the small details on this guy all right look at that now you don't have to go as fast too you can practice you can just but I, I tend to go fast sometimes because I, I like the imperfections I'm just a fan of it I just think nature's not perfect and I use that to my advantage so much and that's why you see a lot of artists they do landscapes because they you can make mistakes you can mess up and it's okay as long as you practice the technique you can overcome anything on these guys all right look at this this tree is looking fun and I love doing this painting you know why because it's making me feel nice and cool it is so hot 
this summer. We are, I'm living in Arizona and it is just phew, brutal. Well, they're setting records and all sorts of stuff this year. So I am just so happy to do a nice cool winter scene for you. Well, there it is, guys. We ended up making an awesome painting out of some very old and dingy brushes and also some very inexpensive brushes. So I want you to know that it's okay to keep some of those old brushes and just get some use out of them. They were such good friends to you when they were brand new, and they're going to be such good friends long after you keep painting all these different paintings you're going to be doing with me. So either way, Keep it going, and I'm so glad we'll see you on the next episode of Brushing Up with Sean.